end time explosions of truth with Apostle Takim. It's been said, if you want to get married, sow a seed. But God has sent Apostle Takim to tell us, if you want to get married, come into my manifest presence. It's been said, if you want to be free from any work of the devil, sow a seed. But God has sent Apostle Takim to tell us, if you want to be free from every work of the devil, come into my manifest presence. It's been said, if things are not okay with you, it's your foundation that is responsible or some altars in your village. But God has sent his teaching prophet to tell us, if things are not okay with you, it is the foundation of the Lord that is missing in your life. The Cry of the Spirit Ministries in Nairobi presents Moment of Grace and Truth, the prophetic and apostolic teaching ministry of Richard E. Esther King. We cannot stop screaming the rumblings of the Holy Ghost to the ears of our generation. Now, follow us to the sanctuary. I want to give you one word to capture the three blessings I have mentioned here. Hmm? One word to capture it. Write this word down. Justified. Justified. If you love grammar, write justification. <laughs> if, you, if you don't like too much grammar, just write justified. If you are a grammarian, write justification. <laughs> are you have you have you done that? Which one did you write? <laughs> Praise God. When you experience death, burial, and resurrection in the spirit realm, you are justified. You are what? Justified. I hear Christians who live in sin claim justification. We are justified by faith. Where is the fruit? Have you understood these first three things? So, so, so when, when you are hearing the sound, so what sound that sounds around you when you tune to the three justification in the spirit? What is it that happens when I'm justifying the spirit? Oh, Isaiah 50, 54 verse 17 will come into effect. Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Do you understand it now? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rise against me in judgment, whoa, what happens? I shall condemn. That is what happened in the spirit realm. When, you are, when that voice begins to sound and you tune your spirit, no demon can condemn you. No tongue can rise against you in judgment. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Anything that rise against you in judgment, you condemn. How? Not just by prayer, by your lifestyle. You condemn it. What is the next blessing of justification? Look at Romans 3 verse 23. Quickly. The next blessing you tune your spirit to. You are justified. If you know you are justified, then you will not listen to those stories about altars from your village. You are suffering because of what your father did. You are suffering because you are firstborn. No, you are justified. Even the things you did in the past, you may have kids, hundred babies in your womb. So long as you have passed through death, burial, and resurrection, you are justified. So whatever you did in the past should not happen in the present because you are what? justified. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So, know that in your spirit that if you turn to let's assume the devil bring the voice of the past, the voice of the things you did in the past, respond to him with the joyful sound that said justified. Amen. Are you a good amen here? Amen. So, when the devil brought you did this, you did that, you did this, maybe you left one church and the pastor is angry, just remember, remind, tune your spirit to that, to that sound. You are justified nobody can condemn who god has justified ask balaam he will tell you do you know balaam yes. should i tell you his house numbers chapter chapter 23 24 that is where he lives he said he has blessed i cannot reverse god have no sin iniquity justified are you understanding me because you, you are buried you have killed your flesh you are passed to burial you are living a new life your new life keeps i mean presents you justified in the spirit realm and the natural realm it doesn't matter who did not understand you you are justified 
It doesn't matter what they call you, you are justified. Most times, people relate with you based on your past. They won't know what has, what has happened between you and God in the present. Are you understanding me? You stand justified and they are condemning you. That is a joyful sound to tune your spirit to. Can I hear a good amen in, in this place? So in that just, in, I mean within that sound, it delivers you from tribalism and tribal consciousness because that transforms you into a new being entirely and you walk in a fresh revelation. So, 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 so the next blessing, please, Romans 3.23, look at what it says. It says, for all I've seen, I'm fall short of what? Of the glory of God. Being what? Justified. Hallelujah. Freely by his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So because of these processes, we are justified. How? Freely. By what? By his grace. You are justified. So nobody can condemn you because of what you did in the past, which you have, which you have repented of. Nobody should judge you according to what you did in the past. Look at what the Bible even says in the book of Romans. Quickly. Romans chapter, chapter 8. Romans 8. You won't fail in Jesus' name. Romans 8.33. Look at what it says. It says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Do you see it? It is God who justifies. Nobody can charge you with anything again. Are you understanding me? You may have appeared before him with doctor. Now you have appeared before Jesus. So that appearance is cancelled. <laughs> Are you understanding me? That appearance is what? Cancelled. Nobody can bring a charge against you. You may have been in a city of refuge and you were involved in, you were involved in all kind of refuse. If you were in a city of refuse, involved in all kind of refuse, and now you've known God, you've left that place, you are in a new realm with God, and they are bringing what you did in the refuse against you in the present, you are justified. Nobody can bring a charge against you. In terms of ignorance, God overlooks. I'm not understanding me here today. These are the things to tune your spirit to. He said, it is Christ who died, and furthermore, so okay, he, he, he said, "Who is he who condemns the study for? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, it's, it's also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also does what makes intercessions for us? So at this level, one of the major blessings of justification is constant intercession from Jesus. I, I mean, constant intercession. Jesus intercedes for us constantly because we are justified. Hallelujah to Jesus." That is a glorious sound, my brother. That is a beautiful sound. That is a beautiful sound. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. At this point, I would like I wanted the three young men to go and sit down, but I don't know if they will see it because I feel that when everybody stands and the analysis is given, it's more clearer. How many of us say yes? How many of you said yes? Okay, well, you are going to so sit and give to me. Praise God. But that's what I feel. But I'm true with them. But let them stand. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you understanding me? That's what I feel. Now, let's go to the second sound. Have you understood the first three sounds? And the blessing in them? Do you, not, do you not know how to tune your spirit to them? You won't fail in Jesus' name. Now, the second sound is the sound of Pentecost. The sound of Pentecost. The sound of Pentecost. Now, we're going to look at the blessing in this sound. No, no, Jesus actually stirred his disciples to tune to this sound when he resurrected. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Acts 1 4. The Bible says, And being assembled together with them, being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from where? From Jerusalem. But to wait for what? For the promise of who? Of the Father. What is that promise? Luke 24 verse 49. The same thing. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. The outpouring of what? Of the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Father. Which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water. But he shall be baptized with what? With the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. No, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, 
Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Do you see what is happening here? Jesus was giving them a sound to tune, tune to, but they are looking for another sound. That is, that is man for you. We are, we are always, we are, you know, it's, sometimes it's more easy to lead cows than human beings. Because the servant answered, and he said to them, It is not for you to know times or season which the Father has put in, in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be what? Witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judah and Samaria and to the end of the ages. Are you understanding me? God will always tell you to tune to the frequency that you are yet to experience. He will always meet to, you have to tune what you are yet to experience. So what is this sound telling us? It's telling us that we should tune to an, a constant outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Dimensions we are yet to experience. Have you ever understood me? That's the joyful sound there. Dimensions you are yet to experience. You tune it. Tune your spirit to those dimensions. Are you understanding me? Let me tell us something. Things I've been sharing. Let me reaffirm them. I have told you before that the entire problems of man are caused by power power failure, not just poverty, power failure. Okay, take out electricity from our planet and see what's going to happen. Advanced countries like the Western countries, take out electricity and see what's going to happen. They will lose a lot of lives. There are people that are surviving by some machines in the hospital. Switch them off for one minute. You have killed a whole lot of people. Are you understanding me? What does that suggest? Whole economies survive by electricity. So that shows you that as a child of God, if you don't have the power of God in your life, everything about you will be gone. Your marriage cannot stand. Your money cannot stand. Your work with God cannot stand. Nothing about you can stand. Your life will not be lighting up without power. So that is the blessing of this sound. It is the restoration of dominion. That dominion that we lost in the Garden of Eden, that is a sound to tune your spirit to. So anytime the enemy is attacking you, don't tune your spirit to the attack of the devil. Tune your spirit to the power of God you do not have. What did I say? Tune your spirit to the power of God you do not have. Even area of money, for example, you are down financially. What is it that makes us to go down in the kingdom of God financially. Lack of power. That is all. Lack of what? I have learned by experience that when you have the power of God in your life, it brings provisions. Write it down. Power brings provision. Write it. Power brings provision. Power brings provision. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, a very common scripture. What did he say? Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that God's word that gives thee power to get word. That is what my book, You Shall Not Be Poor, is going to expose. My God, before the middle of September, that book will be out. Are you understanding me? You shall not be poor. We deal with that. Because when you don't have power, you'll be poor. Of course you will. It's not by skill. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. It's not about how much you wake up in the morning or sleep in the night. If you wake up, you have to wake up to go and gather what power has brought. Are you, are you understanding me? So that is why if you are poor, you are whatever, tune your spirit to this feast. The south. The power of God in your life. If you don't fill your spirit with the desire of God's power and more of his power, you won't press into it. I know how many days I prayed fasting looking for power from God. I have done the first time in my life I, my, in my life I did 21 days fasting in my life as a Christian was not to get married, it was to get power. I have done 40 days for power. When, when I came in contact with my father and the Lord, ah, he, he turned my life around, my focus from that year till almost the next 15 years of my life, of my Christian life, was how to operate in power. So my star scripture was always Acts 1-8 that we're buried in. 
You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall be a witness to me. That was my star scripture. It was eating me. Until one day I came across another scripture in Psalm 66. That said, say unto God, how great is your power. The one I put in my book of coming witchcraft. The back of it. How great is your power. Through the greatness of your power shall your enemy submit. So I begin to know that when I operate in the greatness of power, everything submit to me. Including poverty and lack. So when you tune your spirit to those scriptures, before you know, you get to a point that when you breathe on the sick, they'll be healed. Even you, you'll be shocked. The day one man told his children that anytime they are sick, they should carry my shirt and wear. I didn't know. I was working with a particular church and they put me in their house to, because they had many rooms to be living there as an associate pastor. The man told the children, anytime you are sick, Go and carry his shirt and wear. So I will go out, I will come back, I will see children with my, you know, little children with big, coming like this. I said, why are they wearing my clothes? Even the ones I kept to wash. And they will wear it and they will be healed. You get my point? When you operate in power, you cannot be poor. When you operate in power, you will be a man of value on the face of the earth. So you tune your spirit to this trumpet. To this sound. The sound of the blessing. That is why those who know this sound, demons run away from them. They look for demons to kill, to chew, to cast out. You won't fail in Jesus name. Can you imagine? You are in the realm of worry. Thinking about what have not been done. And you tune your spirit to this. You won't know when eternity will invade time. You spend your time eating scriptures on power. You are tuning your spirit. Before you know the delivery comes. Remember, we said earlier, sound brings presence. So when you tune your spirit to this sound, it brings power to you. Are you, are you understanding what I'm talking about? I want you not to be like our generation that spend time th thinking about the earthly. Let's spend time thinking how to be small g on the face of the earth. Another scripture that pushed me forward was Psalm 82. You are God. I, 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 I asked myself, God, do you mean I am God? Are you really sure this scripture was written well? You are God. And you are all you are children of the most but you shall die like me because you know not I said, oh. so I read that scripture and it so if I am then I shall pray in dimensions of God that is where authority came on me that can stand before any devil and speak the word of the Lord are you understanding me when you turn to this frequency you cannot be a weakling on the face of the earth you see all those people who are not respecting you because you have not tuned to this frequency when you turn and receive the delivery, which is power, your life will change. Amen. Are you understanding me? People who operate in power don't talk about politics. You don't, because you know you have the higher power. They don't talk about earthly things, tribes. Because when you have the delivery, it conditions your lifestyle and conditions your passion and it, it determines the drives that you respond to in your life. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? You will not fail in the name of Jesus. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. Write this down. The blessing of this joyful sound is a life that is kindled with God's miracle working power. The blessing of this joyful sound is a life that is kindled with God's miracle working power. A life that is kindled with God's miracle working power. That is the blessing. How many of you want to be kindled with God's power? Hallelujah to Jesus. Then tune your spirit to this sound. The sound of Pentecost. Look at Acts chapter 2. The, the disciples tuned their spirit for 10 days and they got it. Acts 2 1. Now, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And suddenly they came what? A sound. Is that in your Bible? Acts 2 verse 2. And suddenly what happened? There came a sound from heaven. That is the sound of Pentecost. 
there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were seated then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each one of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance hallelujah so this frequency will get you filled with the spirit filled with power are you understanding me look at it said the sound filled the place so that is the sound of this trumpet that is the joyful sound that was why they didn't talk about agitations you got my point when this comes on you you don't even talk about anything ugly you walk in realms that you become a wonder on the face of the earth you won't fail in the name of jesus you won't fail in the name of jesus what is the one word for this blessing simple sanctified justified sanctified i'm reaffirming some truths i've taught here before sanctified so be sanctified the word sanctified is being set apart you are set apart for god oh i pray somebody will come to that realm of being set apart you are set apart for god if a lady is set apart for god she will not be sleeping around if a man is set apart from god for god he will not be sleeping around you won't carry your body and dash anybody because it does not belong to you you are set apart for god so you don't allow sin to dwell in what has been set apart so when this power comes on you he's telling you i have set you apart for my use so nobody else will use you including yourself i have set you apart for my use i have set you apart so when you listen to this sound of the trumpet god set you apart for his own private use can i tell you what happened when god set you apart for his use <laughs> remember what i told you the day we preach on the image of jealousy he's a jealous god have you ever seen children fighting for a cup huh? talk to me when god set you apart for his use and the devil come to touch you to use you there will be fight <laughs> hello look at i told you before i'm going to read daniel chapter five i spoke about mene mene of hazard look at daniel five <laughs> quickly so that you begin to desire this power desire this sound you get my point it's so sad the church has locked up to bottle of oil Everybody now drinks oil like monkeys. I don't know what a monkeys drink oil. <laughs> you drink when you are sick. You drink when you want to get married. You drink when you want to for interview so that you confuse the people. You are a sorcerer. <laughs> you lick it on your lips. Put it on your forehead and the head will be shining. You are coming like this and the light. Or you drain on your head. These things are stopping the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. These are the things hindering the true Holy Spirit from coming to people. Are you understanding me? There was a time God used oil. Yes! It was when they were not having the substance. Now we have the substance. That is why Peter never used it to pray. Even James, who wrote the book of James, did not use it. He wrote that book to Judaists who became Christians that have not received the Holy Ghost. As I say, if anyone is sick, let him call the elders. Are you understanding me? If you don't read the beginning of the book, you won't know who they wrote it to. So look at Daniel. When God, write this down, when God pour his power in my life, I become set apart for his use. That's important. When God pour his power in my life, I become set apart for his own use. I become set apart for his own use. So nobody can use me. <laughs> Are you understanding me? Anybody who try to use you, he and, the, he and God will begin to fight. So look at the book of Daniel chapter 5. Are we all there? Daniel chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords. And drank wine in the presence of the thousands. While he tested the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels, which is for Nebuchadnezzar has taken from the temple, which shall be in Jerusalem, that the king and his lord, his wife, and his concubines may drink from them. So be used. 
what are the vessels of gold? You are the you see when the when you listen to this sound, to your spirit to this sound, and it brings the blessing of the sound to your life, you become a vessel of gold. The word gold means divinity. So divinity sits on humanity. So you become a vessel of gold. So this uh, man represents the spirit that tried to abuse the vessels of God. Are you, are you understanding me? So the Bible says in verse 4, verse 3, then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple. Okay, verse 4. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron, wood and stone. In the same hour, some of the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote upon the lampstand on the plaza of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. And the king's countenance changed and his thought troubled him. So that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. Of course, anybody who uses a vessel of God, his life will not remain the same. God will shut them down. So look at the judgment that comes on anything, be it. Let me tell you something. When I say something using people who have been set apart, it's not just spirit. Poverty can be thrown on you. Lack can be thrown. Any demonic attack can be thrown. Are you understanding me? So when these things are thrown on you, your owner moves to fight. When, you, when a man is set apart by the Holy Ghost, by the power of God, and the devil tries to throw poverty on him, it's like somebody who wash his cup clean and kept it for his use and somebody pick it to put something inside the owner will fight. Are you understanding me? So, when this man took the vessels and started putting wine in it, wine signifies strange influence. Negative things, that does not agree. So, started putting wine in it, the owner fought. What did he do? He sent the finger. What did the finger say? I am showing you the same judgment that comes upon anything that comes on you when you receive power. Look at, look at what happens. Look at the judgment. Verse 24. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him and this, and this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, taking up hazen. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Say with me kingdom. kingdom. Say again, kingdom. kingdom. I like the word kingdom. Because the kingdom of darkness is what normally moves against us. And when you are sanctified and set apart by the by the power of God. And, and the sound of this feast fill your life and bring power to you when the kingdom of darkness moves against you. God moves against it. I mean, you listen to me. You won't know. You will just be sleeping. I have told you my testimonies. I, I, I'm not saying you will know and start praying. I'm talking about a realm that you don't even know what's happening. And they move against you. God responds instantly. How many of you want to come to that realm? That is favor. So me favor. Yeah. So you can only go there when you tune to this sound. So in the midst of distraction, tell them, listen, listen, I don't want all these things to distract me. There's a sound I am tuning to. I want a delivery of power from heaven. So that when anyone make use of me wrongly, God will just say Mane. Mane is only one. Oh. You know, there are three. Is that not, is it not three? The first bomb is Mane. If they don't change, he will sell Takel. So what does Mane mean? He said he has numbered your kingdom and what? Finished it. That is divine elimination. Are you understanding me? The next one, he now said Takel, Takel, you have been weighing the balance and found wanting. He now said Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to Mets and persons. I want to show you how fast God moves for you against your enemies when you carry the blessing look at verse 30 that very night do you see how fast that very night Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain that very night i pray that as you pursue this blessing that you begin to experience the swift response of the holy ghost you will experience the swift response of the holy ghost in the name of jesus do you see why I said you don't need to be kept busy by enemies? Just become set apart. How many sounds have we seen? Talk to me. How many sounds have we seen? We have seen four. How many blessings have we seen? Two major blessings. Justified and what? 
sanctified. Write this down. Turning your spirit to the sound of the systems of this world will deny you this blessing. Turning your spirit to the sound of the systems of this world will deny you this blessing. It will deny you this blessing. Remember this is a workshop. Are you understanding me? In workshop you spend enough time to chew the word. So when you turn your spirit to the sound of the system of this world, it will deny you this blessing. So whatever agitations that are being blown from the spirit realm is to strip the sense of power. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Breaking every yoke. Making the oppressed go free. Losing the bounds of the wicked. In a systematic delivery of apostolic doctrine. Every Wednesday. And Friday, 5 p.m. as God's servant Richard E. Esther Kim, author of Riding on Covenant Wings, Overcoming Witchcraft by the Greatness of God's Power, and You Shall Not Be Poor, and Fold the word of truth and righteousness under the propelling force of the Holy Spirit. The venue is the Apostolic Center of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries, second floor, GMC House, number two, Kimathi Street, behind Hilton Hotel, opposite Corner House, Nairobi. Jesus is Lord. Where do you go to on Sunday mornings? Do you sit at home or worship in a money-making machine or spiritually dead assembly called church? Join us every Sunday. First service, 8.30 a.m. Second service, 12.30 p.m. Inside Inside Full. Revolutionary and life-giving. Full of the precious power of the Holy Spirit. As God's servant Richard E. Esther Kim, author of Riding on Covenant Wings, Overcoming Witchcraft by the Greatness of God's Power, and You Shall Not Be Poor, and Fold the Word of Truth and Righteousness under the propelling force of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is Lord. The best place to be on a Friday night as a child of God is under the glory of God. Join us this week Friday from 9 p.m. till dawn for a night with El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. As God's servant Richard E. S. Takim, author of You Shall Not Be Poor, Overcoming Witchcraft by the Greatness of God's Power, and Riding on Covenant Wings, Ministers Under God. There will be a revelation of the glory of God and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we pray, praise, and hear the word of the Lord for the night. The venue is the Apostolic Center of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries, second floor, GMC House, number two, Kimathi Street, behind Hilton Hotel, opposite Corner House, Nairobi. Jesus is Lord. It's to deny them these blessings. If you don't know what to look on to God for every day, I will just show you. Are you understanding me? I just show you things to look on to God for every day of your life. Things to tune your spirit to. Even if you are watching TV, listening to anything, if it does not generate this, please shut it down. Because you are a precious soul. Are you understanding me? Now let's look at the best sound. The next season is the season of what? Tabernacle. Is that not? How many sounds do we have there? How many feasts do we have there? One trumpet. Trumpet. What is the blessing of the feast of trumpet? It is called the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is the blessing of the feast of trumpet. The spirit of prophecy. So when God is saying you should tune those who know the joyful sound it's talking about those who can who know the spirit of prophecy and are intimate with it they shall walk in the light of his countenance so what is the spirit of prophecy revelation explained it to us revelation 19 10 it said the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy the testimony of jesus is what the spirit of prophecy. So, so when I tune into this feast, I will begin to experience the spirit of prophecy as the blessing. So the blessing is what? The spirit of prophecy. What is the spirit of prophecy? The testimony of Jesus. What is the testimony of Jesus? What Jesus is saying, the proceeding word. Man shall not live by bread, but by every word that the word proceed. This is where the Bible comes in. 
That's why you spend time with scriptures. Checking what Jesus is saying to you for the now. Every stage of life has a unique word for it. Every stage. It has a unique word. Whatever you are going through has a word from God for it. So you take it to him during this season. To, you see, it's so funny that people have not paid their rent and they are talking about politics. You don't think about your issue. Your own, pers- your, your own private issue. That is that's politicians' private problem that they have made public. You, who will hear your own? Who will take your own to KTN and say she has not paid rent for three months? Nobody. Take it to heaven. Take the scripture, sit with it. Tell the Lord, I cannot continue in this kind of a life. Speak to me. And when they say, don't you hear the announcement? Hey, shut the announcement. I need another announcement from heaven. Yeah. Are you understanding me? About my own case. About my own situation. So this is where, this is where God taught Israel to live in for 40 years. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8. The Bible says in verse 3, that he passed them through the wilderness. Make them suffer hunger to learn one lesson. That man shall not live by what? But by what does what? Proceed. The spirit of prophecy. He speaks. He said things from heaven to us. And he got our hearts against the challenges and the, and the distractions of the first. I don't know if you understand me here today. So, I, so, so when, when you seek the Lord for that spirit, every day as you wake up, you tune your spirit to a proceeding word from God. You look for a manner from God's presence. Let it water your soul with the presence of God. Are you understanding me? Look at how your life will become. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's look at how your life will become. What the spirit of prophecy brings to you as you respond to it the proceeding word of God what Jesus is saying to you for the now look at what will happen. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 he says so he humbled you allowed you to hunger and fed you, fed you with manna which you did not know nor did your father know that he may make you know that man shall not live by bread alone but man live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord look at the result verse 8 your garments did not wear out on you hallelujah your foot nor your foot swell is 40 what is your garment your Christian life no compromise you don't grow weary how many of you understand what it means to grow weary? To grow weary is to be fed up with Christianity. Hello? But when you receive the proceeding where you don't grow weary, your garment will not worn out. You remain strong in prayer. Remain strong in fasting. Remain strong in your work and talk with God. You remain strengthened no matter what is happening. Are you understanding me? Because this gives you strength on the in, in the inner man. It makes your feet not to swear. What is your feet? Your obedience feet. Your obedience to God remain intact. Hallelujah to Jesus. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. So after this trumpet, we now have the next trumpet is what? Atonement. I'm rushing to, to finish up so that we pray. Atonement. If you look at the trumpet of atonement, what do you see? It is calling for deeper consecrations that are capable of planting us in the glory. Deeper consecrations that are capable of planting us in the glory of God. So if you look at that trumpet, the sound that comes out of it calls for consecration. Deeper consecration. Remember, there's a level of dying in the first three feasts, is that not? This one is deeper because the proceeding word you hear calls for a dying. I'm never understanding me. You may, you may just look at the scripture. Like some of you that read the devotionals. Some things you send me on text. You look at it. Oh, I discovered this. Thank you for this word. It has helped me to adjust this way. That's the dying. So the proceeding word brings adjustment. The adjustment becomes atonement. Your atonement. So those adjustments that comes into your life, they, 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 they are the deeper consecrations that plants in the realm of glory. So the blessing of the second trumpet is preparation for blessing number three. Are you understanding me? It's just for preparation to carry a weightier thing on the face of the earth. You will get there. Because some of these things look like stories to you, but it will become experience. 
I say it will become experience to you. It will become experience to you. In the name of Jesus. So in the realm of atonement, one of the major things the Lord gives you is the covenant. He gives you what? The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 25 verse 14. Let's read it because we all know it here, but let's read it for sake of those who don't know. Psalm 25 verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who do what? Who fear him. And he will show them what? The covenant. So, so when you get here, the, the trumpet of atonement, the sound it says is it calls for deeper consecration and gives you the covenant. Are you listening to me? It gives you the covenant to carry. One of the essence of that book, writing on covenant ways, so that as you read it and you begin to walk in those four basic covenants, it prepares you for feast number six. For this trumpet. Because there are other forms of covenant that will come from the Father, having established yourself in the four basics. So you must understand that when you get to this realm, the blessing and the miraculous becomes your partner. Are you understanding me? I told you, it takes covenant men to place blessing on others. So when you get to this realm, you can bless people. Look at what God does. This first three trumpet is to prepare you for you. When you get here, you begin to change sides. Where God prepare you for others. So when you hit here, you are being prepared for others. In the days to come, I'm going to show you where the genuine call of God meets you. I will show you that today. Where it meets you. So that those of you who say you are called, you will know whether it was a flash or not. You will just know. Because the genuine call of God can never meet you there. I will show you the, the place it meets you. <laughs> As you progress with your God. You see, the Christian race is what? A journey. Why did Paul call it a journey? Because you are moving from Pentecost on living bread, first fruit, sorry, a, a Passover on living bread, first fruit, Pentecost, you are proceeding. When you get here to trumpet, it becomes very difficult not to make heaven. Do you hear my statement? That means heaven is sure. Because when you hit this realm, you are not touching two worlds. Your destination becomes closer than where you are coming from when you hit this realm. When you hit this world, and that is why, it, you see, when God wants to send you on an assignment, there are realms he can't meet you and send you. When you are still in these realms, he's just preparing you. Are you understanding me? So in atonement, look at Samson. Samson was placed in atonement when he was told not to cut his hair. That was consecration. It's not everybody. Because in atonement, you are giving your own private conduct. Like I said, some of you, it's strange, but this is an experience that I know you will have as you grow. So you are giving your you are giving your own private conduct. So as you conduct yourself privately, you carry something that others cannot carry. A unique blessing sits over on your life. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So so this sound, if I, when you get to this sound, anything earthly cannot get your attention. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So so you see Samson being told to keep the covenant. When he kept it, he was powerful. When he lost it, he became a prisoner. Are you understanding me? Also, you see the son of Aaron giving the covenant of peace at that level. So this is where those covenants become practical in your life. If you understand me, say I hear. So let's rush to the last phase, which is the phase of tabernacle. What does that sound do? Like I said, atonement prepares you for that one. So, that is the sound that sets you apart to carry God on the face of the earth. Write it down. The sound that sets you apart to do what? To carry God on the face of the earth. Do not forget, the first one here, Pentecost, sets you apart to be used of God. But this last one set you apart, not just to be used, to carry him. There's a difference between being used and being a possessor 
or a carrier of God on the face of the earth. Not everybody is carrying God. Some are carrying just measures. Talking about the fullness. Are you understanding me? It is God's greatest desire that we carry him on it. Can I hear a good amen there? Look at Isaiah chapter 66. The devils we are dealing with now, if you don't carry God, they will deal with you. Isaiah 66. Because the plan of God is that, look up, let me tell you this mystery, it's going to help you. The plan of God is that in this side of eternity, we carry him. That is, in time, we carry him. When we get back to eternity, he carries us. So if you don't carry him here, he will not carry you there. Revelation says that in that city, there is no temple. The lamb is the temple there. So he becomes our temple in the next life. Why in this life, we are his temple? Remember what the Bible says, you are the temple of who? So in this life, we are to carry him. In the next life, he carries us. So if you want him to carry you there, please, carry him here. <laughs> and if you want to carry him, you better follow the sound. And tune to the sound of tabernacle. Can I tell you the truth? Most of what you hear me preach, most of what the God, God called me to preach on earth is from here to here. That's why people call it, I've not heard this. I've not heard this. It's deep. Because when you start preaching from here to here, you go deep. Very few among us are talking here. Majority are talking from here. If they are even talking, because these are the we say first fruit, bring first fruit. <laughs> if I, they are in the outer court <laughs> with the oil drinking and everything, salt and water, they are in the outer court. When you meet a preacher who is talking even from this realm alone, he doesn't use oil. No, because he knows. When you meet a preacher who talks from here, the glory, the glory, the glory. That's what you hear from this man. Truth that pushes you because you see, apostles and prophets in the Bible are called to talk from here to here. Genuine evangelists talk from here to here. Genuine. Genuine. That's why you see Philip, he took the people from here to here. Peter came and took them from and brought them here and took them further. Then they were able to sort out the sorcerer and push him aside. So sorcerers can operate there, but they can't operate here. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So if you get to that realm, the sound you'll be hearing from God will change. That sound there calls for carrying him on the face of the earth. So look at what Isaiah said. Isaiah says, he says, he says, Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne. And earth is what? My footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? Those of you that will build a building and you call it house of God. God is asking you a question. Where is the house you will build for me? And where is the place of my rest? For all these things my hand has made and all these things exist, says the Lord. But on this one I look. On him who is poor and of a contrast spirit. He who trembles at my word. That means people who tremble at his word, they carry God on the face of the earth. May you become not just a church member, but a carrier of God. In the name of Jesus. Most people have carried demons. It's enough. Please, come and carry God. <laughs> it's time to carry who? God. Become a carrier of God. So can you imagine somebody spending his days tuning to frequency number seven that talk about him carrying God. You now come and ask him to come and protest. Will he follow you? In fact, he won't even understand what you are saying. He said, oh, protest for who? And for what? Not to know your brother. My brothers are these who are doing the will of God. Is that not what Jesus said? <laughs> he, he said, my mother and my father is this person. Is that not what Jesus said? He said, we don't know where we belong. That's how we claim where we don't belong. If you don't know where you belong, you will claim where you don't belong. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? May God bring you to the higher height of faith that you need to survive the season. May God use this truth to bring you to the higher height of faith that you need to survive the seasons in the name of Jesus. So what is the one word in closing that we call this blessed? Glorified. So this first three, we are justified. This next one, we are what? Sanctified. And the last one, we are what? 
glorified. So when you are glorified, when you come to the realm where this this, this sound, you are tuning to the sound justified, tuning to the sound sanctified, tuning to the sound just, I mean glorified. Look at what will begin to happen in your life. Romans chapter 8, quickly. Romans 8, look at what will begin to happen. We close on that score. Hallelujah to Jesus. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. The Lord has set you free from any negative influences. On these stones of revelation, you can you will ride over the storms of life. Yeah. On this stone of revelation, you will overcome the negative influences from hell. Yeah. The winds that are blowing to sway men to kill and to destroy, you will not be part of that wind. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, your eyes will remain focused on the master. Your eyes will become focus will remain focused on the master. Your spirit will be tuned to the sounds of the spirit, to the joyful sounds that would have just been explained. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 3. Romans chapter 8. The last scripture we want to read from verse 29. Another familiar scripture. Romans 8 29. For whom we for you, which we are, he also predestined to be conformed. For whom he foreknew. Can I explain that to us? Whom he foreknew. I want one of those ladies to get up. <laughs> whom he foreknew. Whom he foreknew. Listen, watch this carefully. The word foreknew means before I came, he knew me. But what does that mean? I, one of my friends in America, a theologian, um, spoke to me some years back. He, he read one of my books I sent. I asked him to write the forward. He wrote it and he brought something to me, to my attention. He said, explain this. What do you mean by this, this, this? And I explained. And he said something in response that further enlightened me on that point I was trying to make. I said, wow. The man, then he was over 50 years. He had been for a long time with God. I said, wow. So this is what this place ought to be. Say yes. From there, I got the understanding I want to share now. Whom he foreknew. Now, my initial thought from the fountains that we all grew up in was that I existed. We existed before we were born. Have you ever had something like that? That was what I wrote in that book. That was in, I think, year 2000 or so. Yeah. So, so 2003. So the man corrected me and he said, listen, you did not exist. Nobody existed before he was born. He now told me of a cult in America that is spreading that news. And tell him, and he brought, and, and, and the cult will begin by telling you you existed before you came and now end up by saying you are a reincarnation of something. And the thing connected to some teachings in other religions which I don't want to mention. When he enlightened me, I said, wow. But he didn't tell me in fact, his opinion was that delete the whole of that uh, paragraph from the book. I said, okay, sir, but let me sit down and see from what you've told me how I can rephrase it and bring the real thing that's supposed to be there. He said, okay. So I did. I sat down with God. I said, what do you mean? If we did not, because even me, I believe we began. And that's why it's been spread all the churches. And the uh, because we believe in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you were here. What's the bit of that? It means I'll be there before I came. In other words, it means to us. And God began to show me. He said, my plan for your life pre-existed you. But you began the day you were formed in your mother's womb. And that settled it. And I sent it back to the man. He said, okay, that must be from the spirit. You get my point? His, his plan for our lives began before we were born. But we did not begin. We began the day fertility, fertility, fertilization took place in your mother's womb. That was the day you began. Are you understanding me? So believing the lie that we were there before now is not true. But his plan for us has been so God's plan for my life existed but me I began when I was formed in my mother's womb. Are you understanding me? So when you hear God telling Jeremiah, before you were formed, I knew you. What is the word new? You were predestined. I have a plan, a program for you to walk in. 
Are you understanding me? So, but now that you are formed, begin to work in the program. Not that you persisted. If we persisted, all of us know when we ask God to post us. Most of all, we will not tell God to send us to KL. Eh? Talk to me. If you have the chance to sit with God before you were born, what will you tell him? Eh? Will you say you should be born in Kenya? Some of you will choose America. Because of the suffering and poverty in Africa. Some of you have, must have regretted the way I did. Why was I even born in this continent? <laughs> so let me explain. Do you see what I just showed you? If you take this revelation from the realm of the joyful sound, you can see the eternal plan of God for mankind. So God is saying, before you were forming your mother's womb, I pre-planned you to walk in this path. Are you understanding me? So before she was formed, she was pre-planned. Let's say she is you and I. Are you understanding me? And this is the program of God for our life. We hear the Bible say, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined let your mind go to Adam. In the garden of Eden, we're all in him. Is that not? Before we began to be on the face of the earth. So God's program for Adam is, for, is God's program for you and I. So he foreknew us in Adam. And now predestined us to walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. So what I have shown you is in Christ Jesus. Are you understanding me? So let's ask him, come, go and begin from there. So before, uh, begin from the first person. That was where, okay, go, go behind. Hey, stand there, good. Let's say that was where she was born into this world. But before she was born, this plan had been existing. Where she is to walk in. So she had been predestined to do what? Look at the next verse, the next statement. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to do what? To be conformed to who? To the image of his son. That is the image of Jesus. Are you understanding me? Where is the image of Jesus? Look up. Where is the image of Jesus? Where is it? Talk to me. Where is it? Tabernacle. What is the proof in the Bible if they ask you? Matthew 17 is the proof. When Jesus took the tree to the, to the mountain, what happened? Trans that is Tabernacle. God Tabernacle in him reflected. That is the image. So, we have been predestined to conform to the image. So as we begin our walk, keep walking. Passover, are you watching? Walk slowly. Passover, a living bread, come up. First fruit, what do you understand here? New character. The image began to form. The image, which the, the image is formed here, new character. When she hit here, the likeness begin to form. Power. Power begin to form. The lightning begin to form. As she hit here, the voice forms. As she hit here, the consecration of the voice forms. As she hit there, the glory forms. So she is now walking on what God has already finished. So as she walk on this path, there will be no poverty, there will be no lack, there will be nothing, there will be no failure because she is not doing what has not, what, what has not existed. She is following a path that God has finished. Are you understanding me? That is the meaning of we were predestined to conform. So when I listen to the joyful sound, there is no way I will not be conformed. To the image of Christ, this is how we are going to become Christ-like. When we listen to the joyful sound. Finally, look at what the Bible says. To be conformed to the image of the Son, that he may be what? The firstborn among many brethren. What is the firstborn? The first person to raise from the grave. Is that not? That's what I told you. It's not firstborn offering. The first person to come out of the grave is Jesus. We are the next to come out. So if we conform to his image, let's assume she has ended there, Christ in her, the hope of glory. Are you understanding me? So if the rapture takes place, she resurrects. If Jesus tarries, she served the Lord, we all serve the Lord and sleep in the Lord, she also resurrects. That is the next born. The next person to come out of the grave is we. Because we have been conformed to his image. So we can now come out of the grave. 
Are you understanding this romance? Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. He said, and we know. Sorry. Moreover, whom he predestined. This he also does what? Call. I'm revealing a secret. <laughs> whom he called. This he also what? Justified. Is like taking us from there? Justified. Whom he justified. Does he also what? Glorified. But we know in between you have to be sanctified before you are what? Glorified. So I want you to understand that if you listen to the sound of this trumpet. There is no way that you will walk out of God's plan for your life. There is no way that you will, you will not live your life according to the will of God. You may not know what the plan of God is for your life. If you can only listen to the sound of the trumpet, you are already walking in the plan. And people who walk in the plan cannot be programmed by Satan to be destroyed. There is nothing you throw on them here that works. Are you understanding me? Because this, this pathway is called the pathway of the glory. So no demon walks on glory pathways. So if you see anybody who claims to be a Christian going through anything, he's not walking here. Or maybe he has walked and got stuck somewhere. And, and when you get stuck in the journey of life, you start dying. Do you know, how many of you know a, a slope? When a car is climbing and the engine goes off, what happened? That's how Christianity is. You go back. That's why we must keep running. We must keep. There's a song we sing in Nigeria. It says, I am running a race to meet my Redeemer. I am running a race to meet my Redeemer. Because he's here. Heavenly race. Heavenly race. Heavenly race to meet my Redeemer. That, that's what you say. You say, I remember those days, my mom sing that, those songs. Each time distraction is coming, she would just remind herself, I am running a race to meet my Redeemer. And that, that's how we learn the song. Even in church, we sing it. I am running a race to meet my Redeemer. Heavenly race. Heavenly race. Heavenly race to meet my Redeemer. If I'm running a race on this spot to meet my Redeemer, and you ask me to go and campaign, I won't. You ask me to go and protest. Like me, I've not even gone to vote because I've not had the chance. I don't want to stop. I'm not saying you. I say me. Don't copy me. Imitate me in other things, but not that one. So I do not come and say, I am running. I've not had the chance. Yet they have been voting and declaring. That is not my concern. I'm running a race to meet my Redeemer. I am moving. I'm just running. I'm on the move. Christianity is a life on the move. You press from one son to another, to another, to another, to another. Anybody who is this busy cannot be engaged by men. Anybody who is this busy cannot be engaged by tribalists. Anybody who is this busy cannot be tribalistic. Because you are too busy to be involved in tribal things. It is Christians who are not on this path that Satan uses them to do anything. He takes them anywhere. Tomorrow they will hear from God to go and campaign. And they will hear from God who to vote. Somebody sent me a text. Um, based on my spiritual understanding, who should he vote? I said, I wish you were here. I would have voted you with a slap. Hmm. What a word from our God. You have been listening to the cry of the spirit today. The prophetic and apostolic ministry of Richard E. Esther King. Coming to you from the Apostolic Center of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries in Nairobi. For the complete package of this message, further information about the ministry, Apostle Takim's books, Riding on Covenant Wings, Overcoming Witchcraft by the Greatness of God's Power, and You Shall Not Be Poor, or More Encounters with God, call the church office on 0706-370-793. 0706-370-793. Please visit our website at www.cotsmonline.org. That is www.cotsmonline.org. 
www.richardmaguru.org You can also interact with him personally on his Facebook page Richard E. Esther Kim Apostle or better yet subscribe to our YouTube channel Richard E. Esther Kim Also join us every Sunday 8.30 a.m. first service and 12.30 p.m. second service Wednesdays and Fridays 5 p.m. for our midweek apostolic fellowship and the first week of every month for our 2018 Greater Things Apostolic Summit. The venue is the Apostolic Center of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries, second floor, GMC House, number two, Kimathi Street, behind Hilton Hotel, opposite Corner House, Nairobi. Do not forget to tune in to this station next Sunday, same time. Jesus is Lord. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this.